Hello, and welcome to this lesson on Adobe Illustrator. This is to introduce the program and what it does. Illustrator is basically a program which uses lines and curves, fill colors and line colors, in order to make basic shapes as well as complex shapes that can be used in graphic design. Let's begin by taking a look at the, uh, at the program itself. I'm going to create a new document. I can go to File and say New, or I can just do a uh, Control N uh, or uh, Command N if you're using Macintosh. Like most Adobe programs, it does not begin with an open blank document. Instead, you have to tell uh, the program what size paper you're using, what kind of, um, of other uh, you know, things like the landscape or portrait. Uh, we're going to choose just a regular A4 size paper and go ahead and say OK. So here's our artboard and uh, this shows you basically the space in which we can work. Over on the right we have the palettes. So you click on each of these and it shows you various controls that you can have. Uh, over on the left you've got the toolbar and you can access many, uh, many of the tools here. And then along the top, of course, you've got the settings for each individual tool. So let's take a look at, uh, at what are some of the basic things you can do here. Let's begin with the simple tools, such as the line and the shape. I'm going to choose a line segment tool, and I'm going to draw a line. Very, very simple, right? Now, in a program like this, this is actually not called a line so much as it's called a stroke. And you can find the settings for the stroke right over here. The most important, of course, is the weight. By increasing the weight of the, uh, of the line or the stroke, you can make it bigger or you can make it smaller. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit and get a better look at our line here. You can also, for example, make it a dashed line and you can change the nature of the dashes. Or you could give it, uh, for example, an arrowhead at one side or the other and make it into an arrow. So I'm going to take that away. Uh, now, there are different colors that are available. If you go to the color and the swatches, you'll see the colors here. But here in the color palette, you have the fill color and then you have the stroke color. Now the stroke color is really the only thing that you can use when you're dealing with the stroke because there's no fill, there's no background color. So this allows you to choose either from this kind of a spectrum or you can bring these CMYK lines around and you can make different colors using them. I'm going to reset this to black and that is very simply how you would style, create and style a stroke. Now next to the stroke or the line tool, then you can create a shape. If you click and hold down on this, you can see that there's a variety of different shapes. I'm going to begin with a rectangle. I'm just going to draw it right here. You'll see that this has a stroke that matches the one we just made. I'm going to go into strokes and bring down the weight of the outline. Uh, but now I'm going to go into color. You'll notice that now I can assign a background color, a fill color and that allows me to fill the shape with a color and I can still of course change the uh, the color of the um, of the stroke which is around the shape. So there we go. Uh, you can also use swatches as long as you choose one of the colors. I've chosen for example not the fill color but the stroke color. You can go into swatches, excuse me, and in swatches they have a lot of preset colors. You can just choose one of these I'm going to choose, for example, one which is green. And there we go. All right, so that is how you make a basic shape. As I pointed out before, you can uh, have other shapes. Here's a rounded rectangle. Here's an ellipse. An ellipse is very simply just a, uh, a circle. And again, we can change the colors here. I'm going to change first the uh, stroke color and then the fill color. Let's uh, give it that one right there. I'm going to go into the shapes again, and I'm going to change it again. Let's go for a polygon. Uh, this allows me to, to have various kinds of multi-sided shapes. Uh, I can choose star shapes, for example, the star tool, and make myself a star. There we go. Uh, now, in order to move these around, you want to go back to this black arrow tool, and that allows you to move it around. 
because otherwise if you're still selected on the shape tool it's just going to make another shape it's not going to move anything all right so uh, that's how you can make uh, quite a few uh, different uh, shapes as well as lines and once again you can change the uh, the fill color and you can change the stroke color there we go all right so that is very much the basic of creating strokes and shapes in Illustrator. So let's go on to the next point. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to backspace or delete and get rid of them. All right, so that's the basic strokes and fills. Now let's talk about drawing lines with the pen tool. This is really what this program is all about. So select the pen tool over here. You'll notice that there's several of them. You just want to have the basic pen tool. Now the pen tool is rather powerful because it allows you to make a variety of shapes, really almost whatever you want. Let's begin with a very simple shape type, and that is with straight lines. So if you click somewhere, on your pasteboard and then you click somewhere else it'll make a line between those points the last point that you clicked that's going to remain active and when you click again it makes a line from there to the new and now if you go again and again and again you can eventually make any kind of shape that you want i'm going to go back to the original point and if you click on that again it will close the shape and now you've got your shape. Now remember, there are two kinds of arrows in the toolbar. The black one will move the entire object that you just created, whereas the white one has the ability to focus on any one point and change that point. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to click on just one point, and now you'll notice that I can move that one point to the exclusion of all others. So I can move that while all the others are not being moved at all. Or if I want to, I can select two points and I can move those together like that. I can move them around anywhere that I like. So as you can see, this, uh, this gives you a fairly powerful drawing tool just right there. I'm going to erase this shape. And now I'm going to show you curves. Again, I'm going to select the basic pen. And now, instead of just making, I'm going to make a single point here, but instead of just clicking, I'm going to click and drag. So right here, I'm not going to just click. I'm going to click and then hold down. And then when I pull, when I move, when I drag that point, you can see it creates a curve. And I can, I can angle this in almost any direction I want. By uh, pulling it out more, I can make the curve uh, wider. Uh, by twisting it or rotating it, I can make that curve angle any way that I want. So there we go. I'm going to do that. And then you can keep on doing that. If you, again, uh, just uh, click and hold down and then drag, you can make another one and another one and another one. And you can shape these pretty much whatever in whatever way that you like. Now, this is a lot more difficult uh, than, the, uh, than the straight shapes that we had before. It's very difficult to kind of predict where these lines are going to go. But once you have your shape, again, you can get that white arrow tool. And you can go back in and you can edit any one of these points that you like. Now here you can do a couple of things. You can click on the point and you can move it to a new location. But you'll notice that it has these antenna. And that allows you to control the overall curve between this point and the next point on both sides. So you can really shape this curve then to be almost anything that you want. So again, this gives you rather powerful control, although the curves are much more difficult to work with than are the straight lines. But as you can see, you can create pretty much any shape you want with these two basic tools. So for example, if I was going to create maybe the letter R, I could start down here, and I could go with straight lines right there, another straight line out to here, 
But when I make the right side of the R, I'm going to click and drag and make myself a little curve here. There we go. And then I'm going to bring it back over here with just a, uh, just a, a plain click. Then I'm going to angle it down right over here. I'm going to angle it over to here. I'm going to bring it up over here. Bring it down again over here. Uh, and then close it right over here. Now you'll notice, for example, that there are a couple things that I might want to fix. This line right here was not perfect. So I'm going to get my white arrow tool and I'm going to just click on that one, uh, that one spot and I'm going to straighten it out. There we go. That's, uh, let's see, I think I can hold down one of my keys here and make it go a little bit. No, I can't. Okay, well, eventually you should, I think if I zoom in, let me zoom in quite a bit more on this. That'll give me much greater control. Let's see, go out again, select that one, and there we go. That's more what I was talking about. There we go. Uh, this one might be a little bit too high, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit. There we go. Come back out, and then of course I can go back in again uh, with my pen tool, and I can create that inside part of the R right over here. Create a little um, semi-loop, bring it back down, and then close it. Again, that's not perfect, but it's not bad. Uh, so I'm going to then select my shapes. I can select the outline, the outside line, and I'm going to give it a, a color. I'm going to give it a fill color there. And I'm going to go to my swatches and make it into an orange one. Now, in order to take out the orange there, I'm going to go back, select the inside loop there, and then I'm going to go and give that a white background, and that'll give me the effect that I want. Uh, okay, so that's how you would use these, uh, these uh, points, uh, lines, and curves. Uh, this is basically called working with paths. Uh, each one of these is a path. You can see that when I move my cursor over it, it actually says path. That's what I'm selecting there. Uh, and you might be surprised to know that actually you've seen these uh, a lot before. You just didn't realize it. I'm going to go in here with a text tool, and I'm going to make a text box, and I'm going to make a capital R. Uh, I'm going to go to my character uh, panel here, and I'm going to create it and make it much bigger. I'm going to make it 120 point. And now I've got a large letter R. Let me try something bigger. I'm going to try maybe 220. There we go. Okay, so I've got an R there. Uh, and what I can do is I can take that, I can go to the type menu, and I can create an outline. Now this is really what the font is in the first place. I'm basically revealing its nature. And if we, uh, it would work best if I get the white selection tool. You'll notice that the R has a bunch of, uh, of, uh, of spots in it. These are basically paths. And if I want to, I can select some of these and I can change it just like that. I can select that one and pull it out. Select this one and also pull it out. Uh, it gets a little crazy, as you can see, but this is really what fonts are. So you've seen these kinds of points lines and, uh, and, and uh, curves. You've seen these paths really almost all of your life in fonts. It's just that they don't usually allow you to edit them like I'm editing them now. But you can do that when you pull them into Adobe Illustrator. All right, now I'd like to show you a couple of tricks that you can do using Illustrator before I get to your final assignment. Uh, these, of course, center around using the, uh, the, the pen tool and, of course, using paths because paths are really at the center of almost anything you do in this program. So I'm going to start by making an anchor point here. Just click. I'm going to go up and to the right and then click and drag to the right. There we go. Then I'm going to go a little bit of a distance over here so that we can have a nice curve down and then angle it back up again. And then I'm going to just click up here to try to end the curve. There we go. So I've got a nice curve here. Now, one of the things that I can do with this curve is that I can type text along it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to find my text tool. It's right over here. Uh, this is just a normal text tool. If you click and hold down, 
you can see that one of these tools says type on a path. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my cursor over here. You'll notice that when I move it over this path, it intersects and gives me that green little uh, notification there. That means that if I click, then my text will start to move along the path. Now I'm going to run out of room here, but you can see basically how that works. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to use my white, um, my white uh, arrow here, and I'm going to make that line a little bit longer so that text comes out, and there we go. You'll notice that when I deselect everything, I just see the text. If I want, I can give the path a, uh, 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 I can give the path a thickness, or the stroke, I can give it a thickness. So I can go like, uh, like this, and I can give it a thickness. But that, of course, is not what we want, unless, unless you do want that. But if you just want the text to, uh, to appear moving along that path, then there you go. So you can make text move along any line that you want to draw. This can be a circle, it can be an arc, it can be a wavy line, it can be straight and uh, curved lines, combinations. So you can really make the text move along any uh, line or design that you desire. So I'm going to leave that there for the time being. And then I'm going to go back again and I'm going to get my pen tool. And I'm going to create another uh, line here. So it doesn't have to be fancy or anything like that. Now you'll notice that as I'm doing this, uh, this time I'm getting both not just a line color, I'm getting a fill color. So if you ever see this happening, the thing to do is to go over to your color palette and simply go to where it says uh, the foreground color or the fill, and then just click on this little white box with a red line through it, and that'll make that fill color go away. Now you'll notice that right now I also don't have a line color. I want to uh, reverse that. I want to make it so I do have a line color. I'm going to just make it black like that although we could change it to any color we wanted to just by moving these, uh, these little uh, uh, buttons there. So now I have myself a, uh, a path, and it's got a, a stroke thickness and color. And now I'm going to use something called the brush. If you go into brushes, there's a couple that are already out, and all you have to do is select your path, and then click on one of these brushes, and suddenly that path will change to the style of whatever brush you select. Now, right away, we only have three or four of these. So what you want to do is that you want to load some libraries. So we have various libraries that are included in this program. I'm going to choose Artistic, and I'm going to choose uh, Paintbrush. And that's going to give me a whole bunch of new uh, kinds of uh, brushes here, which I can then click. And then my line will have exactly that style. So that's kind of cool, uh, but it gets even more fun than that. Uh, what I can do, for example, is I can change the color of that stroke. So if I make it, for example, purple, you'll notice that the color transfers uh, to, to this. So I can do it in many colors. But also, there are a lot more brush libraries. I can go here and open a brush library, and I'm going to go into Borders, uh, Decorative, and here I have a whole bunch of new ones here. Uh, so I'm going to click on this one, or this one, this one. So you see I've got a whole bunch of different borders that I can, uh, that I can use here. Notice that it has not only the border, but it also has the border edges. So if I choose a shape, like a rectangle, I'm going to choose a rectangle here, and then I click on one of these, you can see that I actually get the border edges, or the corners, as well. Uh, and that comes out to looking like a really, really nicely uh, decorated uh, 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 border there. Now, another thing that I can do, and let me get this out of the way, is that I can change the stroke. You might notice here, let me bring this nicely decorated, it looks like a stained glass window almost. Let me bring this up here. Now, if I change the weight of the line, and if I make it a thinner line, then the border gets smaller but I can make it get bigger and bigger and bigger still if I want. Uh, in this case, it probably is better just to go down to something like 0 0.5. And then you can see that I've, I can control how big that decoration is. I'm selecting this one here as well. I can again 
make it thicker and thicker, or I can make it thinner. I can go to 0 0.5, for example, and there I've got my new design with the new size. I brought out some other ones too. Here's one, for example, of uh, novelty borders. Uh, so I'm going to take this line right here. Let's see what happens when we apply these. These are branches, uh, bird tracks, dog tracks, railroad tracks. I have another one here called uh, decorative banners and seals. So you can create a banner that uh, looks uh, exactly the way that you want it to. Uh, let's choose one of these guys. So you can see that you can get uh, very creative here and make some really uh, artistic kinds of, uh, of banners and seals and so forth. We've got uh, decorative scatter, which means that if you uh, click on any one of these, the shapes will repeat uh, roughly along that line or sometimes exactly along that line. Once again, if you go to the stroke and you make it smaller, uh, you can then decrease the size of the pattern that you've just created. Uh, there are a lot of these uh, libraries that are included in the um, in the brushes area, remember you've got to go to brushes, click on this button up here, and go down to brush library, and you can see that there's quite a few of them here: decorative, uh, br bristle brushes, borders, artistic arrows. So there's a lot of stuff in there that you could use. You can also go to websites like DeviantArt or other websites, and you can download new libraries of brushes and basically just have all kinds of fun. All right, so I'm going to uh, close some of these. There we go. And now let me tell you what your assignment is going to be. Let me. So what I'd like you to do is use the tools that I've, uh, that I've given you to create a little illustration. Uh, your illustration should have at least, at least some uh, text on a path like I'm going to create right here. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to create some text here. I'm going to say, for example, fall off of a cliff. There we go. Uh, so uh, I'd like you to do at least one. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. It can be any shape that you want. And then there should be uh, at least uh, several uh, uh, lines that you create with a pen tool which have any kind of, uh, of decoration on them using the various brushes. So I'm going to try doing that. I'm going to get rid of the, uh, of the fill. And then I'm going to go over to uh, brushes. And I'm going to choose one of these guys just as an example of what that might look like. Uh, but I want you to do more than just this. I want you to, of course, have some fun, get creative, and uh, make a lot of different uh, attempts at designs. Use shapes, use lines, use paths, use fonts, um, use uh, whatever you want. There's all the tools up here that you might need. Just have fun and basically just scribble all over the page using as much variety as you can. Then when you save that, uh, uh, you'll want to go to the file menu. Uh, now, of course, for this assignment, you'll want to, want to just save this as a, uh, as a straight Adobe Illustrator uh, document, that's AI. But notice that you can also save it in other, uh, uh, in other ways. For example, you could save it as a PDF, but I want you to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file. Uh, there will be instructions on how to do that uh, on the web page that hosts this video. But another thing you can do is that you can also, uh, you can export this and as an, uh, when you export it, you can save it as uh, any one of many different uh, 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 image file types. For example, a PNG. If you save it as a PNG, then the parts of the page that don't have anything will just appear transparent or empty. So you can make graphics that can be used with other graphics as well, on top of them, underneath them, aside them. So there's a lot that you can do with this program, and I just want you to get started with this. And that is your assignment in Adobe Illustrator.